we are live. Welcome to 2022's Prey Review and Thoughts Film Predator 5. So I'm going to start this video by telling you this was a movie I absolutely loved. And yeah, this video will have some jokes and it will definitely get somewhat serious. This is one of those movies where you should probably go into it knowing absolutely nothing. But if you want to know just a little, or you've already watched it, watch on. I will not be spoiling stuff from the movie. It's just that, yeah, you really shouldn't know anything. In fact, ideally, you should watch this knowing that Predator movies exist, but not yet knowing that this is technically one. But, yeah, you know, I added that it's Predator 1. Predator 5, rather. So, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And, yeah, so, I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger, you know, while I spoil so you can mute and skip hit and choose to see me lower my index finger. Also, please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in this franchise. And as soon as I end the review itself, the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. I am not going to talk about any canonical stuff that isn't in one of the movies. I realize that it's, you know, some of it is considered movie canon, but it's not in the movies, so. And... Let's see. Yeah, so the. I am going to get political in this, and my main inspirations for this is are the fellow YouTubers Going Rampant, The Take, Maven of the Eventide, Turf Nation. Yeah. I'm going to briefly explain about how I look at politics. I know some people say that representation of minorities was better back when it was subtler, and I don't think those people are hateful. I respect but disagree with this point of view. Despite countless movies released over decades, a lot of people still don't have empathy towards minority individuals. Right now, the GOP are passing laws to hurt minorities, transphobic ones, misogynistic ones. You know, in researching for this, I reread the abridged script for the, you know, the ones that, yeah, owned, you know, all but the Patreon ones. But, yeah, the original Predator, one commenter claimed that women get a free pass in the legal system. I mean, I guess he's discounting every single rape case. By far, most of the ones for abuse. Honestly, I'm not even entirely sure what he was referring to at all. I guess this... This idea that women can accuse men and not be held accountable, frequently they aren't taken seriously when they accuse men. And it is a site that has comment moderators. They sometimes go hard on people providing constructive criticism by writing suggestions for what could be in the abridged script. If they've ever moderated to delete hatred of minorities, they do sometimes delete people defending minorities, I'm not aware of it, and it's not impossible to do. There are way more commenters on Outlaw Vern's site, but I've seen much less messed up stuff on there. There's, there has been some. I, th I think it's time for being much more direct about the experiences of minorities. To be clear, nothing more than activism, but yes, you know, activism to, yeah, being more direct in activism through media and in real life activist action. Now, this movie is rated R, and so is this video. It's rated R for strong, bloody violence, some of which I am going to discuss. Not show, but discuss. And, yeah, whether you love or hate this movie or this franchise, you know, I don't have a problem with you automatically. I don't think that, you know, I, I don't think that everybody who hates this movie does so because of bigotry, but, you know, yeah, clearly some do. If you express a viewpoint that goes against what I say in this video in the comment section, the only thing I ask is that you keep it respectful, and I'll answer 
with respect. If you write something hateful, to, whether it's directed towards me or anybody else, I'm probably just going to ignore you. I am not claiming that everything I say in this is factual. A lot of it is just my personal opinion, and there's nothing wrong with disagreeing with my personal opinion. Now, let's see. That brings us... Um, yes, you can go into watching, you know, you can watch this movie not having watched any of the other ones, and you'll be perfectly fine. You're not going to be confused. And the, uh, let's see, I, uh, I suppose you may need to watch it more than once. If you know absolutely nothing about the, I believe they're called Yaucha, which is, I'm probably going to try to say Yaucha instead of Predator, because otherwise it'll be confusing with, you know, because if I just say Predator, I might just mean the first movie. So, yeah. The, the, if you don't know anything about the Yaucha, you may need to watch it more than once. It doesn't explain as explicitly as some of the other movies do. But yeah, you, you can watch, but you know, if you have, I've, I've watched all of them. I've watched all of them at least three times each. Yes. And the first two I must have watched a couple dozen times. I used to have them on VHS. So yeah back when there was significantly less good stuff to watch, you know. I don't rewatch stuff quite as much anymore because there's so much incredible stuff to watch. I don't think I don't think that you will like this movie less for having watched the other ones unless you take issue with the the fact that the lead here is female. Finally, for the first time other than that, this really doesn't, it doesn't contradict the canon. I've, I've seen some people say that it, that some of the lore is different, but this, I mean, I thought it was pretty clear this is a different Yaucha than the other ones. That's why it looks different, and some of the aspects are different. Like, yeah. Literally every single movie changes something about the Yaucha, so I don't know why this is the one people are, well. I know part of why this is the one people are freaking out about. Now, let's see. Yes, I should say, I am not myself Comanche. I don't know anyone personally uh, who is Comanche. I, uh, I'm going to try to not say something really ignorant in this video, but if I do, please know it's, it's not on purpose. I'm not trying to insult or offend any native peoples. So this movie has a version, I, I don't know if it's in every country, but it appears to be in Europe. You know, it, yeah, if you, you can, you can watch it in the, you know, the English or in Comanche, and the Comanche version does have English subtitles. I chose to watch the Comanche version since, you know, it was made by the people who made the original movie. This is not like a later redub. And it just seems, it makes more sense for the Comanche to speak in their own language rather than in English. It is a dub. It's not that they filmed the movie in both versions. They filmed it in English and then they dubbed it over. And for the dub, they chose to go for better acting than to always match the lip movements. And that will bother some people, and I completely understand. I can't help but wonder, maybe one of the reasons that this did not go to theaters is that they made, made this Comanche language version. If they put one of the language versions in theaters, that means the other one might not get seen by very many people. And putting both of them in theaters would be very expensive. But it, yeah, it, you know, currently it has a... It has the Comanche version with English subtitles. It has an English version, you know, where you can also have English subtitles if you want. 
actually the European one has a bunch of different languages. I, I only watch the Comanche one, at least so far. Now, right, and, and some people, you know, apparently not everybody found the, and found the Comanche language version on the Disney Plus website, and certainly, you know, I can't rule out that it's just not available in all territories, so I don't blame anyone who, for that, but yeah, if you, you know, if you want to watch that one, you know, open it, open the, the page, click extras, and that that was where I found it, you, you know. Uh, I also did try to just click play, but it I did not see the Comanche dub in there, so. And, you know, I, I saw one review that said they hid it under extras. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how other people watch that. I, I always check extras. I, I mean... We're paying plenty for these movies. There should be some extras. So, yeah. Anyway, the... In both the... the let's see. Yeah, whether you watch the English language version or the Comanche, you know... Yeah, either the Comanche speak... In, you know, in the English version, the Comanche speak English. In the Comanche version, the Comanche speak English. But there are some characters who are French, and they speak French, and it is not subtitled. It's not translated in the subtitles. And this appears to be in both language versions. I believe this is because the Comanche characters do not understand French, and we're seeing the story from their point of view. I respect their decision, I'm not going to lie, I personally, I find it frustrating when I'm watching something and I don't understand what is said. I don't mind subtitles, but I, I really don't like, so that that was, yeah, that, that bothered me a tiny bit. And, it, yeah, I saw one of my fellow critics point out, never seen a movie where the main cast speak Comanche, and it's very cool. Absolutely. I, yeah, I, I... I will consider watching it in English when I rewatch one of my review. Th this is 100% a movie I'm going to watch again. Yeah, I the the I I will definitely consider that. Now, yeah, this is my first viewing and me like the time between me finishing watching the movie and now recording this review was very short. I did eat lunch. Anyway, that brings us to the plot. The year is 1719. The Comanche Nation. Naru, a young woman struggling to convince the rest of her tribe that despite being a woman she can be an incredible hunter, discovers something in the forest that is much deadlier than the animals they're used to. And that is, yeah, so let's see, the, yeah, the IMDb, more like this list, compares this to The Predator and Predators, so that's the fourth and third movie, and on Disney Plus, this is... Yeah, in the suggested section, it links to all four of the previous Predator movies. It leads to both AVP movies, and it leads to Alien, Covenant, and Prometheus. And... Let's see... So, yeah, the... I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to watch this when it first. I love the trailer, right? For like the moment I saw, you know, the the trailer. Like I think, yeah. At, at first, it didn't. Did it say Predator Five in the? Yeah. I I'm not sure. Uh, the. I think it makes a decent enough sense to to advertise it partially as Predator Five. 
But I do disagree with the people who say, oh, you know, they're not even putting Predator in the title. They have so little faith in it. That just, uh, real, real quick. I saw some one guy review it and say, oh, next time, take a chance. They did. It's in, you know, they released a Comanche cut. And, you know, the, yeah, and regardless of which language dub, which language version you watch, the lead is a woman that's taking a chance. I, I love how these people simultaneously say, you know, oh, you're never, you know, get woke, go broke. You're not going to make any money if you go woke. And then they say, oh, they're just going woke because the, the, the you know, it's not, it's not taking a chance. The, the, um, let's see, the other thing was, yeah, when I watched the trailer, I immediately knew I wanted to watch it, but I'm not, I'm still not 100% sure if just everything Hulu goes to Disney Plus or Star eventually, yeah, I, I've seen a couple of things that I saw advertised as going to Hulu now show up on Disney Plus. So I, I'm not 100% sure I, if it is ev just everything. I, I hope so, but they've already put up, you know, they were also have Not Okay, which I also really love the trailer and I also hoped I would get to watch. And yeah. And yeah, the I've I've always enjoyed the the Predator movies and the Alien vs Predator games and the movies. I mean, they you know what? It could have been worse. They pointed the camera at the subject, and they. I'm sure there's something else positive about them. I'll I'll think of it at some point. Now let's see. That brings us to the writing. Now this was written by Patrick Azon, who let's see, he has written he has t he's he has four tv writing credits and this is his only theatrical writing credit i hope he writes more i have to admit i haven't watched the various like he's uh yeah he's produced some stuff i haven't watched the tv stuff that he's written Now, the, the various characters I felt were quite credible, and the way situations played out, there, you know, there is a, a clear internal logic to the movie. You know, it's not the most realistic movie, but, I mean, none of the Predator movies are particular, particularly realistic. And the, yeah, I think that might cover all I have for the writing. Now, the, Right. Uh, one one thing I briefly wanted to add about the writing, I really felt like it understands the uh, like. Yeah, I already mentioned you meet. You know, there are French characters in this, and you have a bunch of Comanche characters and, or, yeah, people who are Comanche. The the. There's a very clear understanding that these two people have very different philosophies. They they look at nature in very different ways. And the, by the way, it's it's not a at all a spoiler that the that there are these French people. The first time you see 
a clear indication of them is, is very, very early on. It would have been very strange if after that not a single one of them made an appearance. So, yeah. And the... Um, yeah. Uh, that is it for the writing. So, the direction was handled... Actually, yes. Before I get into details about the direction. So, the film series before this entry. Worst to best. Keeping in mind I enjoy them all but the original is the only good of them. Predators, The Predator, Predator 2, and Predator 1. So, yeah, for those not terribly familiar with the titles, that means that I think the worst one is the third one, then the fourth, then the second, then the first. And, you know, both AVP films are terrible. Much, much worse. Big fan of all the lead actors in the solo films, and I think many of them deliver some of the best performances. You know, this the original Predator is one of the movies that underlines, under the right circumstances, Schwarzenegger can act. You know, he, he gets a bad rap. And a lot of the movies, just he's given lines to say that he struggles against that make it harder for him to, to act and just yeah but the original Predator he is legitimately good in that and yeah and, and most of the cast are well cast in those movies and so that they would be fresh in my memory I rewatched you know every yeah all the solo movies and I I didn't watch all of the first AVP. I just watched the Predator scenes, and I, I did watch all of the second one, but not in a single sitting. And it, it, yeah, so you know, to be clear, when I criticize the solo movies, it does come from a place of love. So yeah, this was directed by Dan Trachtenberg, who has five. TV credits as director, one music department TV credit, and other than this, the only theatrical movie he's directed was 2016's 10 Cloverfield Lane. I'd like to watch it. I, yeah, I, I will watch it if it hits Disney Plus at some point. I thought the first Cloverfield was fine. And, yeah, he's, he's directed two shorts, one from 2003 called Kickin'. I looked here on YouTube, it uh, I, I wasn't able to find, uh, yeah, find it. And he directed the, the short called Portal, No Escape from 2011. It's excellent, and it's currently free right here on YouTube. The behind the scenes is definitely worth a look as well. The only bad thing is that there is way too little GLaDOS, and that does feel like... I, I, I understand why that choice was made, but GLaDOS is key to the, the portal appeal, so yeah. But, once again, I completely understand the choice. Now, he says in interview that he wanted to make a movie where the story is told through the action and that's yeah this is this is a very this is all about the visual storytelling this is not a movie where people are constantly telling each other what you know yeah it's there's there's a lot less dialogue than in a lot of of movies it's it's not not absolutely nothing but many times you see who a character is through what they do and the you know i, I forget it, yeah it was one of the actors who said in an interview that dan was always open to their ideas he wanted to stay true to the spirit of the original and i think he did he he said that you know, we never really got back to the the way the original 
and he wanted and yeah he thought that they could do that with this and yeah they they did and he says it's not really a prequel it's a story apart from the others but it is in continuity with the first film and Right. Yeah. So, quoting some fellow critics, the best movie in the series since the first one. Tight, efficient, true to the first without rehashing any of the other movies. I... Yeah, the, the mud sequence is incredibly tense. Definitely. Strips away the mythology. It's about hunters versus a Yao Chan. It doesn't copy the original. Not a ton of dialogue, it's all about the hunt. The weapons are simple and very vicious, and it is a movie about, you know, hunters and hunting, so it is a lot gorier than, you know... Yeah, it, it, it it's gorier than the others, and it's a lot gorier than a lot of action movies are today. And it's the rare and great soft reboot that doesn't try to go for a big spectacle. Lower budget, different idea. This is how you do a soft reboot. Character driven rather than plot driven. Deserves to be in a theater. Now. Yeah, so the opening does a really great job of just immediately you get a sense of what life is like for Naru and yeah just you know not every movie has to start with a life in the day of but it is an effective way to open a movie and it works really well here now I'm not gonna give away whether the ending is happy or sad but it fits with what came before I am f extremely happy with how the movie ends it does not rely on Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. And, you know, some some of the ending titles run over this drawing, th these drawings of what, some something that happened after the events of the movie. And, yeah, I would definitely... I, I would definitely say it's worth watching at least the first little bit of it. You know, you, you'll know when to, uh, yeah. But it does not really have a post credit scene or mid credit scene or something. I, it never lost my interest. I wasn't bored for a second. I legitimately do not understand. I, I try to understand the other side. I, I want to, but... I have no idea what they're referring to when they say that it's boring or slow. That's you know, I I haven't read every single review I found, but the I let's see. I went through I went through all the I'm to be voted most the the 100 voted most useful, and none of them explained how it's slow or how it's boring. It just yeah. I'll, I'll get more into it in, in the spoilers. It's hard to get into without spoiling anything. So, getting into the cast and characters. Amber Midthunder plays Naru, a young Comanche warrior who wants to protect her tribe against this unseen danger. I forget exactly who it was who said in an in interview, it might have been Amber herself, herself. She pointed out the first Native American action movie lead is about time. Like, I mean, I know a lot of people don't think very highly of Native peoples, but you do get they made a living for an extremely long time, hundreds of years, in a very inhospitable environment without modern technology. Like, if it was a, you know, the, like, they they mastered things that we wouldn't know the first thing about. 
Now, Amber says the first thing Dan, the director, said to her that was that she was the Arnold of this movie, and she didn't see it that way at all. I've seen her in about a dozen interviews by now where the interviewer rightfully gushes about how great she is in the movie. She doesn't seem to have an ego about it at all. Let's see. I... I think there's a good chance that she could become great. I, I, I realize this isn't the first thing, but this could really launch her into, you know, she, she, let's see, Cause, you know, they, they wouldn't all have to be, I realize that there's only going, they're only going to make so many that are actually about Comanche, but, you know, Billy in the original was Comanche. And yeah, you know she could she could play a role like that in a modern, uh, you know, set movie. You know she is. I've, uh, I'm not 100 percent certain if it's Comanche, but she is. She uh, she is a native born. And yeah, you know I I would definitely you know and and also like. There, there are times where she says something funny in the movie. She's also great at that. I, yeah, I, I would definitely, I, and I, I hope to see her in more. I, she, yeah, she's really, really, absolutely incredible in this. And she can communicate a lot without words, with just her face, just her eyes. And let's see, it, she hunts using her dog, Sari. Now, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, Sari's a good boy. I don't know. I think she might be a good girl. It's never made clear which. But good, definitely. Now, yeah, I, most of the movies she's in, I have haven't even heard of but yeah I let's see and she's she's 25 years old very young to be the lead in something so big very very cool and yeah various critics have said you know she gives an absolutely amazing performance yeah Right, I did see some guy say her name can't really be Mid Thunder. You've got it slightly wrong. Your name can't be Mid Thunder. Hers can and is. Don't be jealous just because other people have culture. This is why some people prefer yogurt to Americans. If you leave yogurt alone for 200 years, it develops culture. And Dakota Beavers plays Tabe, Nauru's brother. I. <sighs> He's he's really really good. Like I did not know. Like I I heard something about like he does he apparently doesn't have a lot of. If is this his first movie or he just doesn't have very many other credits? But yeah, he's he's great. He's a natural. And Dane Diliegro plays the Predator, and I have not seen anything else that he's in. But he does appear to play a lot of, like he's he's credited as Muscle Monster, and what does that say? Scare Patrol, the Dragior. So these are, yeah, other roles that are more physical. As yeah, he was a stand-in in Free Guy, but not as a, yeah. He really does, you know, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's a spoiler. He, he moves slightly differently from some of the other Predators, but it, it makes sense, it works, you know, and, yeah, just, like, the whole, I'm, I'm really, really glad that, I mean, Overall, all of them have been great, but yeah, I'm just, I'm really glad that we have talented people in the suit. You know, it really their performance means so much to the success of the movie. Now, 
according to interview, the predator head is on top of the actor's head rather than a mask. He says he couldn't see or hear anything. I, it doesn't, if that shows, then I didn't pick up on it. And I knew that going into it, that he did. Yeah, not neither in a good or bad way. And yeah, quoting a fellow critic, Dane DeLegrio does Kevin Peter Hall's legacy proud. Yeah. Kevin Peter Hall. Amazing talent. Like, I have to admit, I think the only roles of his I've seen are The Predator and Harry and the Hen Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. But man, does he do it. Like, I realize that, uh, you know, it helps that Harry has such a friendly, goofy face. But just look at his movements, man. You would never guess that it's the same actor. He really understood how to make them incredibly distinct. And, you know, I, I think, was it the direct... I think it might have been McTiernan who decided, you know, Kevin does such amazing work, and he really deserves to have his face in the movie. So, you know, the... Yeah, I already mentioned I'm spoiling the movies. He's the helicopter pilot, or the, the, the pilot of the Chapa. And... I have to admit, I don't really have a lot to say about the other... Yeah, the, the other characters. I'll, yeah, just real quick, I'll say that... Yeah, I, I do, I appreciate that some of the, some of the French characters, they... You know, one of them is listed as big beard, another is waxed mustache, another is spyglass. So it's almost like that's what the Comanche named them. You know, rather, you know, that, those are not their Christian names. Those, so, so yeah, I, I appreciate that. I, I like when a movie, because really the whole movie is from the Comanche perspective. So, yeah, the... Yeah, in interview, Dakota Beavers points out that, you know, the character, Naru's brother, Tabe, is not jealous, but loving and protective. It's not that, you know, he doesn't want her to do well, it's that he's worried that, as a hunter, she can't quite, you know, he doesn't think she's ready. Now, as other critics have pointed out, there is not a lot of depth for most of the characters. You know, the 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 tribe members are very one note, and the the character depth. Naru has character depth, despite what some critics have said, or user reviews have said. But other than that, not. Yeah, and and that is too bad. That is. A divergence for a predator movie where like I could give you a hundred words about any major character in a predator movie other than this one the solo movies not the not the AVP movies I mean I'd like to say that the girl who says that a gun is like a condom I think her mother told her never to stick her tongue in an electrical outlet, so she did, and that's why her hair looks like that. But other than that, I really couldn't tell you. Well, there are words that I can say, but I said them in my videos on that movie. Now, let's see. Yeah, you know, the... the I try to go into whether characters get lost, but with the background, and if it's bad, okay, or even positive, and for sure, like here, I mean, I am aware of several other characters than the ones I've mentioned, but I couldn't tell you very much of anything about them, and yeah, like the there's not really a lot of um 
Yeah, but, you know, we also aren't forced to spend a lot of time focusing on characters that just don't get very much development. The characters who don't get very much development either aren't very much in it or eventually do get, to, or, you know, eventually, or do get development. Now, but, but for sure, it is mostly Nauru. Yeah, so the dialogue, some have said it's too close to modern slang and it's too simplistic and such. I thought it was fine. I mean, I think they... I think they were worried that if the movie went in too many different directions that people would be frustrated by that. So they kind of pared down anything that doesn't, like, most of the dialogue is about, like, there, I guess that's, okay, I'm gonna see if I can find a way to finish that sentence without spoiling anything. The dialogue tends to be very plot related. There aren't really conversations that don't have any relation re, uh, yeah that that have nothing to do with with the plot and you know i believe that even is true for the the french i think i overall understand what was being conveyed in those scenes but yeah the and it's it's delivered the the lines are delivered well like you'd never mistake the, you know, yeah, so a bunch of the characters are very similar, but yeah, you would never mistake something, a, a line of Naru's for one of the, the other tribes people, or one of Tabe's for, yeah, any, any other tribes, so, yeah, and some of the Yeah, the, you know, Amber herself, like, at times, Naru is very scared. Sometimes she feels emboldened. Sometimes she's happy. Sometimes she's sad. And, yeah, she, all of it is completely convincing. Like, I was never, I never felt like it was, yeah, it, it never f fell flat. That brings us to the cinematography. I, I'm not telling anyone that it's not okay to hate this movie. If you hate it, you hate it. But I do think if you give this the absolute lowest rating possible, all I ask is try to think back to the cinematography because that alone should bring it up. At least some, and I, you know, I appreciate. I saw one critic who said, "Okay, I don't like this movie, but because of the cinematography, and he mentioned some other stuff, you know, he he rated it a five out of ten, even though he overall did, which is also not that great of a rating. But anyway, this is an incredibly well shot movie, and anyone who like." If you, if you can't acknowledge that, I have to question your ability to even judge things like that. Just actually look at it. Just, you know, forget how much you hate everything else about the movie, if you hate everything else about the movie. Just look at some of these shots. Like, there's this, this glorious shot of, like, the, the sky and, and nature. Like, it's a, a lot of it is nature, you know. That's, yeah, duh. But... It just the the colors and the just it, it's it's stunning looking, and this is again like yeah, the cinematography was handled by Jeff Cutter, who has twenty five. Nope, never mind. Fourteen if you don't count the music video. Seriously, IMDb has to figure out just to put music videos in a separate than feature films. Anyway. Yeah, uh, 
Right, he was DP on the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Well, I don't, it's, it's shot fine, you know, I, yeah. And, let's see, 10 Cloverfield Lane, so they worked together on that, him and the director. Um, yeah, I don't really recognize... Well, yeah, some yeah some of the music videos he he was DP on are also really well shot. But yeah, gonna quote fellow critics here: stunning cinematography, the best the series has ever looked. Cinematographer Jeff Cutter, Paul Orphan, does a good job of capturing them and bringing out the inherent menace, them being the fight, and bring out the inherent menace of the surroundings, whether lush green woodland or the desolate remains of a burnt-out forest. Yeah, just the the colors and the just, yeah, in, absolutely incredible. And yeah, like, there was not a single shot, like, let's be perfectly honest, there have been some really badly shot action scenes in some of these movies. You know, I would say it's it's basically all good in the in the very first one. And let's see. Some of the third is definitely really well shot. The fourth one, especially some of the some of the action scenes and just yeah, and and both of the AVP ones yeah and and here it really is you you can like if there's a fight where you can't see absolute no never mind actually yeah you can see absolutely everything i was gonna say that there might be something but where you're not supposed to see no every, every single fight like i could i could give you a play-by-play -play of every fight i i can tell exactly what is going on with absolute clarity. That by itself should be a given, you know, but this is the... Yeah, a lot of modern action movies are shot really, really badly. Now, let's see the... Yeah, and, and the, the cinematography reflects, like, in the... At the start of the movie, we get some quiet scenes, and the cinematography is very calm. It's not hyperactive. And then during the action scenes, you know, the camera moves more, but you can always follow what is, is going on. Which brings us to the editing, which was handled by Claudia Castello and Angela M. Cat Catanzaro, and yeah, they do excellent work. I am not familiar with anything else by Claudia. She has 12 movie editing credits from starting in 2013, and Angela has 18 TV credits as editor, and five movie credits as editor and I'm also not familiar with the other ones that, that she's edited but yeah the editing keeps it easy to follow fast moving scenes action scenes and such and it's much more calm when that's called for there is no scene that should have been cut from this there aren't scenes that should have been moved in the overall structure or trimmed down or increased in length And let's see. Yeah, so this was actually shot in Alberta, Canada, which and and as far as I can tell, that is also you know, it's it's basically shot in the area where it's supposed to have taken place, you know, three hundred and three years ago. So yeah. That is really, really cool. And Let's see. Yeah, 
quoting a fellow critic here, what I really like about this movie is that it's filmed on location. It doesn't feel fake, like a lot of movies nowadays being filmed in giant warehouses with green screen and everything being filled in in post. Very true. And I would say it helped the performances because, like, you can tell, no, they really are, like, out there in this, uh, you know, like, even, even if you're aware of, like, larger animals. Like, you know, if you can, if you can tell that a wolf or lion is onto you before it gets too close to you to, you know, do anything about it and, and make it out alive, even in, in that circumstance, you're still dealing with some really, like, you know, obviously for the movie production, they, you know, it's not as dangerous as it was to just try to live back then. But it is, ah, what's the word? You know, yeah, you can still tell. Like the the in in the in the third movie, the the yakuza guy takes off his shoes and feels the mud between his toes and and on his bare feet, and that's b a r e feet, and the. Yeah, you know, in, in, in this, you can really tell they they actually were out in this really, yeah. So, this has some of the most intense, intense action that I've seen in years. I literally don't understand why some people are saying this movie is boring. I, I yeah, um, and there's a lot of action quoting a fellow critic here, some of the best action in the series, each action scene is well shot and intense, and they're all distinct too, like, it doesn't, the following doesn't have to be true of every action movie, but for a lot of action movies, it can really help, like, ideally you want, a, uh, Something that some action movies strive for is that an action scene, like, it should tell part of the story rather than the story stop so we can watch an action scene. It should be born out of the story. It should, you should be able to tell when, it, like, you should be able to sit down and watch one of these action scenes out of context and be able to place it roughly within, you know, without having to watch the movie, you know, say, is this one of the early action scenes? Is it the climax? You know, I would say, I, I would argue, for example, the, I mean, yeah, really, the, the, the Predator, this, this series itself, you know, this, this movie, but also the, the entire series, the solo movies do a pretty good job of that. You can usually tell if something is, you know, early or late or climax or introductory and, and this kind of thing. Yeah. And ag again, like, I, not every action movie has to do that. Some of them do really well without something like that. But this is an action movie where it makes a lot of sense for that to be one of the goals, and it really, really works. Like, early action scenes, I guess that's a spoiler. I'll just say that something changes over the movie that greatly affects action scenes. And the, let's see. There's a lot of hunting and killing and, uh, let's see, yeah, some, some fights and, yeah, that brings us to the score. So this was handled by Sarah Schachner and... 
yeah, she's done a bunch of, she, she, yeah, she scored seven video game, let's see, yeah, so two calls of duty, one called Anthem, and four Assassin's Creed. And she composed a couple of it's a four yeah four shorts. She has four TV credits as composer. This let's see oh right right yeah and three movie credits as composer. This the Lazar effect the Lazarus effect and remains and yeah she did an incredible job. Let's see the um, yeah uh, quote a fellow credit here. The music is good throughout, but it becomes excellent in the third act because of some pulse pounding tense pieces of music. Yeah, it it really and and it worked with the sort of yeah. I saw one critic. I forgot to copy it in, but I saw one say that some of it sounds like Dances with Wolves, and yeah, you know they they. They composed some that sounds like, you know, we, we, those of us who aren't native peoples, we, it, uh, indigenous people, I guess is the right word. Yeah. Um, I don't do very many movies that have, that are, that are this based on indigenous people. That's why I'm, I don't have the vernacular down, but yeah. Those of us who are not indigenous people, you know, the music needs to work for us. You know, at, at the end of the day, the vast majority of the people who watch this movie are not indigenous people. And the, yeah, it, it needs to work for an audience, raising, you know, and, and in general, it's not just the music, but in a number of ways, it uses action movie visual language and such but yeah it it finds i i think it's a good balance but again not indigenous so you know if i i don't think i found a review by someone indigenous who spoke to it in either direction but yeah the the ah what's the word i i felt they found a good balance between something that sounds indigenous and something that communicates to a Western audience what it's supposed to. The sound design is incredible. The, the, I already mentioned that there's, you know, there's significant gore in this. The noises for the gore are also really grisly. Yeah, with a with one S, not two Z's, Z's, but just yeah, you know, bone crunching, and and just yeah, some some incredibly incredibly visceral. They they did just yeah, tremendous job on that, and the pacing, yeah, it. It moves quite fast, and there's definitely no time wasted. Now, the movie is an hour and 30 and a half minutes long without end credits, and 39 and a half long with end credits. So, yeah, you can... Yeah, like I, like I said, you can you can just sit down. You don't have to watch anything else. You don't need to know anything. Like to sit down to watch this, you basically just need to be aware that the Comanche are not settlers. That's that's literally everything else you'll you'll be able to deduce from the movie itself. You know, yeah, know that indigenous people, you know, exist. Although sadly way less than before colonizing and everything else you'll deduce from the movie 
which is just they yeah really really stripped down really sparse but in a good way i i didn't feel like anything was missing you know yeah and yeah so the best element of this yeah as usual i can't really tie it down to i, I can't pick just one so it's tied between Naru as a character, Amber Mid Thunder uh, performance. It's, seeing the Predator done right again. I guess that. And the climax. Holy crap, the climax. I'm fairly certain that my heart has not like returned to its its usual like yeah man that was that was intense so the the worst aspect is definitely the CGI and yeah so the worst thing according to others it should have gone to theaters and there are other criticisms, but I'll get into them in the spoiler sections. So I was worried that it would make the prequel mistake of over explaining things, best left mysteries, and it absolutely didn't. And I was most looking forward to a Native American star as a hunter and the movie exceeded my expectations i really want to see more work by these people i'm not sure that it would be that the I, th I think it would be fine to hold off on predator movies you know for a while although you know now that disney has the property i can imagine they're going to keep trying to get more money out of this doesn't feel like this feels like a real passion project it doesn't feel like a paycheck not for anyone working on it now the trailers do give away too much both of the ones I've seen I do think that it's difficult to completely like the fact that this is a predator movie is a big part of the appeal but the, the some of what the trailer shows is a bit into the movie. And it definitely is like the trailer gives you a good idea of what the movie is like. And the cover and poster don't give too much away. I really love the poster with Naru having Predator Blood War Paint. On her face and the other ones are really cool I like that I like that Nauru appears on most of them I'll just do really really quick like there's a poster you know that they're on IMDB so you know I recommend looking them up there yeah there's one that's like a cave painting awesome there's one where the predator is standing in like a cave entrance and there's one where Naru jumps towards the predator and the predator is like kaiju sized there's one of just like um, an up-close battle and there's predator blood on the axe and there's one where Naru appears to be oblivious to the fact that the predator is several steps behind her and it's got the um, laser targeting ready and everything. And, you know, several of these, you know, I mentioned that one of them is kaiju sized. These posters don't, they, they give you an idea of what the, what's in the movie, but they don't like, yeah, I, I'm not going to tell you exactly whether the stuff that you see in these posters appears in the movie, but, you know, 
don't expect all of it to, I guess I'll say. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has 92% based on 158 reviews. That's that only 12 of them are rotten. And the audience score is 83% based on over 500 ratings. The critics' consensus is the rare action thriller that spikes adrenaline without skimping on character development. Prey is a Predator sequel done right. And yeah, so the, the average critic rating is 7.70 out of 10. And the, you know, 83%, that's the percentage of users rated at 3.5 or higher, and the average rating was 4.1 out of 5. And yeah, that is certified fresh. That is, you know, there's a lot of action movies that are really well made that don't get quite that high a rating, but the movie deserves it. And on Metacritic, this has a 70 out of 100 which is defined as generally favorable reviews and there are 32 critic reviews 49 user reviews and the user rating that 70 71 people rated it as users and it ended up with a 6.2 out of 10 now the yeah so the on IMDb, let's see, there are 686 reviews total, and if you hide the spoilers, there's 561. When I checked the, uh, what's it called? Yeah, right, the, the 100%, the, 100 top voted IMDb user reviews. And yeah, okay, so 27 of them. All right. The ones who gave it 1 out of 10 were 27. 2 out of 10, 15. 3 out of 10, 5. 4 out of 10, 9. 5 out of 10, 6. 6 out of 10, 3. 7 out of 10, 7. 8 out of 10, 12. 9 out of 10, 11. And also 11 for 10 out of 10. So. Yeah, that's a lot who hated it and a lot who loved it. And of the 106 links in the IMDb external review section, 83 of them were in English and not quality, you know, yeah. And yeah, so on, you know, Yesterday, it had a 6.4, and while 46.5, yeah, 46.5% gave, had voted 10, 21.7 had voted 1. But today, it's 15.6% that gave it 10, 12.2 gave it 9, 26 gave it 8. 23.5 gave it 7, 9.7 7 gave it 6, and yeah, less than 5% gave it, you know, 4.1% gave it 5, 4.2% gave it 1. So, yeah, it's it's a really well-made movie. I, do, I don't know how you give this less than an 8. So, these, the, the special effects, the... Let's see. Yeah, quoting some fellow critics here. A lot of the CG... A lot of the effects are CG, but there's also a lot of practical effects. And the CG on animals isn't always the best. And it's definitely... I think there were two times where I found it distracting, but most of the time I didn't. But yeah, there, there were a couple of times where... It's like okay, that's that's not a real animal. I can I can see that that's not a real animal. It's yeah. 
Now, yeah, so the, you know, very gory movie. I did see one critic say the same kind of kills we've seen in the franchise before, and they thought it was a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's trying to stay true to what we've seen in the franchise before. I, I didn't feel like it was just, yeah, I don't know. I, I thought the gore was great. And I watch a lot of horror movies. And it was also like, you know, sometimes gore is just cool. Some of the gore in this is cool. But there's also some gore in this that's very, like, unpleasant looking and really gets a gut reaction out of you. And, you know, considering that this is about a extraterrestrial hunter that, you know, skins people, I feel like... Yeah, that should be uncomfortable. And you know, the the gore in the first one, some of the some of that is also really yeah. So I yeah, this is the part where I give a rating. I'm gonna start by saying I am almost definitely gonna watch this again very soon. But yeah, this I rate this ten epic hunts out of ten. The let's see. I'm I'm not saying the movie's perfect. I'm saying that the strengths so greatly outweigh the weaknesses. I think you know if I if I could change something about this, I I think it would be good to have just a tiny bit more characterization for some of the the characters like the alien versus predator 2 is not a movie that i refer to very often as a positive you know that movie has some like archetypes and just gives you just a tiny little bit about the various characters and you know done you feel like you you know enough about them to you know you're not necessarily invested but you get their deal and for some of the characters in this they were just completely interchangeable and I think it would have been at least a little bit stronger if you knew a little bit more about them. but that is it for the review itself so for the rest of the video there will be spoilers this is the thoughts section the rest of this video is not a review. It's a series of, well, thoughts. Some of it's analysis, MSTTV, riff tracks, other jokes. And let's see. Yeah, so the section right after this is thoughts I have while watching, chronological order. You can think of it as a running commentary, live tweeting, and the like. And the section after that is thoughts that I had before watching. And that brings us. So, yeah, notes taken while watching Let's see. so yeah I I really love the the opening I didn't want to give it away in the in the review itself but just you know at first this, the screen is black and you know Naru narrates that what was it there once a monster came to came to others so something along those lines and you know the image comes in and visuals and sound give us a sense of time and place wind gust animal noises and just like in just a f in in few seconds we you know we're 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 there you know this is it's yeah and and the and the notion that she's that they're very attuned to nature also comes across. And Sari, the dog, adorable from right away. I've seen some people say, "Oh, you know, of course you're going to put a dog in." There's, you know, it's that's an easy way to get audience sympathy. I mean, I gotta say, it's been a while since I've seen a a dog show up in an action movie. I don't know. Is is that still I don't know. I'm 
I agree that it's like I don't know how anybody could not love to, well, okay. I understand, you know, the my mother was actually attacked by a dog once. And was always afraid of dogs after that. But they're easy to love. I'll I'll go with that. You know, it's it's a it is it is usually easy to love a dog. The it you know, I mean there are there are movies where dogs behave terribly. Like how many Beethoven movies did they make? Like seven or something? And it's like we are supposed to like you know, obviously we we understand what was his name again? Charles Gro Groven? I I'm I'm a I'm a fan of his. I, I really like some of his stuff. But yeah, you know, we're supposed to empathize with him, but we're also we're not supposed to hate the dog. You know, and you know, I'm not saying I do or did, but just I mean, if you if you stop to think about it, it's actually kind of ridiculous how much bad behavior in movies we we put up with because we love dogs so much is what I'm saying. You know, but yeah, it, you know, dogs adorable and like I would I would agree if it was like every single, you know. I guess also just it doesn't feel to me like the dog is just there to be adorable you know in in part it shows that Naru is able to train Sari which is you know makes both of them it, it displays the intelligence of both of them now let's see yeah, and, and, you know, Naru is woken up with, you know, yeah, that's, I, I don't know if they actually did wake up the, the women like that. It feels like, okay, just, it, that, that seems unnecessary. That's, yeah, but, you know, she does the gathering, but it's very clear she would rather hunt, and we see her expertly throw the tomahawk, and uses the dog to help her hunt. And the loud rumbling spooks the D E E R deer. She chases but doesn't catch it. And yeah, the deer that was some of some of that CGI did not look great. And I was like, okay, there's they didn't actually have a deer there. And I don't blame them. I mean the situation that they that is called for you know, it's it's difficult to and and Let's see. You know, they were already struggling with, you know, they, they were filming this in the woods, you know. So it, it really, I, I understand the decision, but yeah. I'm poor sorry. I'm getting the foot paw caught in the trap and, you know, the trap would be used against the Yamcha later. And Nauru sees the the predator ship and you know she does know what it is and like we the viewer you know those yeah anyone who went to this movie having already watched a prayer movie you know yeah you you we we knew exactly yeah i i got to i got to see if i know someone who's never watched a predator movie show them this and and like see how quickly they they deduce these these things yeah but it's also the movie doesn't you know waste forever before you know the the predator does stuff even really early on now it's, i i really love the transition like she let, let's see yeah the we see the we see this guy and the, the predator ship goes you know through the image and we still see that same sky, and then the camera pans down, and now it's Naru and Tabe together. I, I really, really like that. I, I love when people can work in something like that. It, it didn't feel really awkward and forced. Now, I, yeah, I like the you know they they talk about the trial. And she pretends to snore to get him to shut up about his own trial. That was 
I yeah, she that that was so so good. Just yeah. And you know, yeah, he doesn't think she's ready. He's very protective of her. And we start getting a sense of the tribe and the camp as now returns. And we see the ship that the predator gets off around eleven minutes into the movie. We first see you know, we don't see like everything, but you know, we yeah, the predator is now on the planet, you know. And that is something like I've said it before, I think it it takes way too long. Movies like Predators and the first Alien vs. Predator movie take way too long getting the Predator, like, m telling the, the audience, yes, this is about Predators. Because we know, dude, we know. It's not the first movie anymore. You know, that, I mean, I'm not going to claim that the second one is perfect, but... At least the Predator is there from right away, you know, because nobody went to see a Predator movie after the first one without knowing what the Predator is. That's just, that's not a thing. Now, and a lion took Puhi, so Naru joins the hunt, and the Predator kills a snake after that kills a mouse, so the food chain gets a new link at the top. And they're at home prepping the hunt. Naru is certain that it's not a cat. And the snake was still alive, even skinned. Yikes. And that's also... That's such a... That's really clever. Because snakes do shed their skin. But not like that. You know, it's, it's like... <laughs> yeah. It, it, they, they take something that we've seen before and they twist it in this really nasty uncomfortable way uh, you know similar to how I mean technically the alien movies are about uh, giving birth you know partially that's that's one of the things that happens in those movies is someone gives birth but it's ugly and uncomfortable instead of beautiful you know so yeah yeah I, I say beautiful I've never actually witnessed a birth and I Hope never to. Don't worry, I'm not a father, nor will I be. If I were or were going to be, I would witness the birth. Yeah, that's holy crap, because, you know, the snake sheds its skin, but then the predator comes and just rips the skin right off. Let's see. And, and that's also... It's... That's what the predator does. It doesn't kill you before skinning you. It skins you while you're still alive, but I'm almost 100% certain that we have never seen one of the, the living things that were skinned move after being skinned. I'm almost certain. I, I could be, again, in the official movies. Now, let's see. Yeah, and, and Tabe gives Naru a chance for the trial. And Naru tries to kill the lion, but gets knocked out. And Tabe brought her back. I think Tabe killed the cat. And is celebrated. Naru is certain the lion wasn't the danger. I've seen some people read it as her being jealous that he's getting celebrated when she walks off. I take it as she thinks that they're celebrating prematurely because the lion was not the greatest danger threatening. It, like, it's not that she can't be happy for him. It's that she's worried that they're going to lower their guard and more of them are going to die. And when Tabe talks to her afterwards... That's what she says. She doesn't say that she's jealous of him, and it's not like she's scared of speaking her mind to him. She makes fun of him all the time, calling him boring. But, you know, some viewers didn't even consider that option, even when it's literally stated. I gotta say, I'm not 100% sure. Like, there's that part where Naru and her mother are talking about medicine, then Tabe comes in, and he says something like, you should listen to me. And then she responds, we're not asleep. I get that she's making fun of him, but is she, one, saying that if we listen to you, we would be asleep because you're so boring? Or, two, is she saying when we want to sleep, we'll listen to you because you're so boring? Either way, I love it. 
and Naru was woken up before her brother for the gathering. I don't know for certain about Comanche culture, but certainly there are a lot of societies where women are expected to work much harder, much longer than men, given no credit for it. Stereotypically speaking, speaking, raising a family is a lot of very hard work, and traditionally, the woman is given all the woman is given for it is the family, and sometimes the family can be very abusive towards her, especially the husband, and she doesn't have very much recourse. You know, if a, a man who gets a divorce can just remarry, but a woman who has been married is, you know, has a much harder time f finding someone new to marry her. And Nauru finds some predator blood. And the prayer finds a wolf hunting and then kills it, rips out its spine. Yikes! That's like, again, like, I'm used to go- I've seen so many gory movies. I've been watching gory movies for 20 years. This was still really, really- I mean, I guess part of it is also that the, the wolf looks somewhat like a dog. I don't like wolves. I, I don't- I don't have a problem with them. I know that they're not actually anywhere near as- eager to hurt human beings as a lot of people have thought you know if if a wolf attacks a human being it's because it's delirious hungry or protecting its territory or, or dying possibly you know stuff like that but I'm not I would never keep a pet wolf but it looks enough like a regular dog a, a domesticated tame animal that just like you know yeah that and and they hold the shot, too. Like, the dog is lying there. Let's see. The uh, wolf. This is the wolf's head. And the prayer, you know, like, cuts in here. Rips out the entire spine. And just, like, okay, we get it. Spine's being removed. It, it takes, like, several seconds. And we're just sitting there watching this. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just, yeah. You know, it, it helps really hammer home this thing is nothing to be trifled with, you know. It is... It is a bad motherfucker and an ugly motherfucker. It's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a badass motherfucker. And Naru throws the tomahawk, misses the rabbit, so she ties a string around it so she can easily retrieve it. She spots another rabbit. Smash cut, she killed like a half a dozen of them. And yeah, the movie shows Naru having ideas, mastering skill sets that her peers don't. And hopefully this can help inspire young women to see that they too can do something that others can't. Like, uh, there are a lot of incredible things that have been done by women. Right, and the predator uses a, uses a gadget to melt off the flesh of the wolf head for a trophy. That was also really, like, I mean, I just, I guess, did I not say that? I, I rewatched all of the, the movies. Yes, I did say that. I did say that. The, yeah, Predator 2, like, we also, you know, we see it walk away with, that's also something. Can we just talk about how some of the time, the the head that the predator takes as a trophy is not the head of the greatest war. Like, we don't even see, we didn't even see it fight King Willie. And apparently, like, it, it killed him with such ease that it wasn't difficult to remove his head. Like, it didn't, like, had to have to make a decisive blow. Like, his head looks fine when it drags it away, you know. And... I don't even remember whose head it takes in the first one, but I'm, I mean, it's not one of the, one of the very best of the, yeah, anyway, yeah, you know, in, in the second movie, we see it do something to remove, like, oh wait, yeah, we see the, we see it suck brains out, I, I'm not sure we see it do anything about skin and, and flesh, a anyway, but yeah, here just, yeah. And, you know, Naru finds large skin buffalo honors its spirit. I saw a reviewer that pointed out that neither Naru nor the Predator can understand why would you skin 
you know, a, a large buffalo and just leave the meat to rot there like that. You know, that's the 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 French trappers are below even the standards of the predator. Incredibly tense scene with the mud sinking. Like I was, I mean, I was fairly confident. Okay, the, the movie's not over. She's the protagonist. She's probably gonna make it. But like this slow and the and the fear in her eyes, it just holy crap. And just slowly sinking, and and you know she gets the tomahawk and she throws it, and and pulls and and she you know it didn't it didn't stick. She man she throws it three times where it it like she can't use it to pull herself. And the fourth time she's able to pull herself out. I like holy crap that was tense. And she hunts the bear and struggles. You know, the part that was in the trailer, her firing an arrow at it and then running away, that wasn't the plan. That was what happened when things went wrong. You know, I saw a ton of people say, oh, look at how bad she is. It's a trailer. Wait until you see the movie so you know what the context is. That's that's what trailers do. They show things out of context so you're excited to see the context. And some people are like, ah, oh, I don't know the context, so I don't like it. Yes, I realize I just described two different things. I'm not saying that people who thought they had guessed the the context. I'm not saying that's the same. That's not. Yeah. Anyway. And yeah, the predator kills, and the blood from the bear showers the predator. So we get a brief look at it. That was really really cool, and just holy crap. And again, like, okay. This is why they're using CGI. They didn't want to actually dump gallons of blood onto an actor standing there holding up a, a prop of a dead bird. You know, that's, yeah, but just, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and the men physically abuse Naru when she won't do what they want her to, and. And the predator attacks them. It's just yeah, I'm sure some people will say it doesn't make sense that the three laser sights can move independently. First off, I'm almost certain we've never seen a situation in the movies where a predator wanted to target more than one person, more, or yeah, indicate more than one target, and was unable to because of tech. But if that is the case. Since it uses the the laser sights for a completely different kind of ranged attack, you know, this, like, spear kind of thing. It doesn't look like anything we've seen before. Even the, you know, yeah, there's that gun that fires the, the little, um, yeah, when in, in the second movie when she says he was boned like, I've never seen anything like it, he was boned but, but, like a fish. You know, that little spear tip thing, you know, that's completely different from what it uses in this. So, yeah, I'm guessing it's a different laser sight device. And some people will dislike that this predator can stay cloaked even when in water. The cloaking looks different, so it appears to simply be a different type of cloaking device. And sometimes more advanced technology is more sensitive. You know, I've... There are VHS tapes that I know for a fact have been dropped on the floor falling like maybe two-thirds of a meter hitting the floor that have survived and played fine and then there are DVDs that you can drop once that you know they'll never play properly again and actually yeah sometimes even DVDs sometimes they they don't work even when they come like right out of the the factory I mean, maybe that happens with VHS tapes, but I've never, I've never bought a VHS tape and not been able to play it, and I don't know anyone else who has, you know, so if, if it's possible, you know, please correct me, but, yeah, it's, the, let's see, phones are another thing, you know, if you drop a, a smartphone and the, the screen hits something hard, that's it, but, you know, I mean, I've seen movies 
where someone used the phone as a projectile weapon and then it still worked afterwards you know you got you got to make sure it's still plugged in or whatever but yeah you know so yeah let's see great fight between two of the male hunters of the tribe and the predator that was really just yeah right uh, about that i um i feel like i saw someone say you know why is naru the only woman who doesn't who wants to hunt instead of gather first off we don't know for sure that she is the only one there's nothing in the Comanche dub that says that she's the only one and let's see there was something else right she might just be the first one who has the guts to say it and to act on it you know, and by the end of the movie, she's proven that she can hunt. Maybe some of the women of the tribe will, you know, now also try to hunt and will excel at it. So, yeah, about halfway through the movie, it starts killing humans on screen. And I think that is the right, because once that happens, like there's there's nothing else you can do the rest of the movie we're going to be sitting like i got to defeat the predator got to defeat the predator got to defeat the predator why are you doing other things than defeating the predator that's what we want to say you know and that is one of the things with you know the, i mean the second predator movie it's it's filtered through this cop story narrative so it's the thing you know ah oh, he he got my partner i want to i want to get him you know kind of thing but yeah, like the audience, like I, yeah, I guess the the idea is we're supposed we're we're supposed to be happy to see the predator just killing a bunch of people. And it's just like after a while, I I would say the movie pushes it about as as far as it it can. But yeah, I do think that that movie would be more interesting. For example, if the the predator was a, a hunter instead of just a serial killer that uses futuristic technology, because Let's be honest, that's what it is. You know, it, it kills people who are no threat to it whatsoever. Now, yeah, so the... Yeah, so the the, uh, the French show up and Nauru is taken by the French. And they abuse the dog. And, yeah, it's clarify you know the french the that one french man killed the the buffalo and he bullies her presents to hit her and then she grabs the thing and hits him and he's like okay fine then you know walks off i'm i was he considering shooting her after that and then one of the others said no we can use her as bait i guess and they have a man who speaks comanche and french and they cut tabe right in front of her just ugh. And this, yeah, the siblings are tied to a tree as bait. The trappers hunt the predator. And that's what you chose for a trial? So, so a sarcastic sense of humor does run in the family. You know, the mother laughed at Naru's sarcastic crack at him, and now he made one. So yeah, it's just the, the entire family has a sarcastic sense of humor. I need a horse. I want to make an Arby sandwich. And an hour and one minute in, the first time we see the full predator fully uncloaked. And Tabe admits to her that she did have the lion. Very tense fight between the trappers and predator, and we get some predator two type stuff where it just slaughters a bunch in very little time. But I honestly, I cared every time. I was never like, oh, now there they go. You know, I wasn't emotionally invested all the uh, all the time, and you know. A lot of the ones that died, I wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm so sad that they're dead. But I, I, I was never just bored, which, again, you know, I've seen some people compare this to Jason X. That movie gets very little of a reaction out of me. And that sucks, because I think there's something there. And I do like Jason Voorhees overall. I think some of the movies are really, really fun. Having watched all 11 
and the the versus movie and it, yeah you know there's that bit where one of them like cuts off the mask and there's like steam and she's like oh poor baby kind of thing you know that is like that gets that you know that gets me to like cringe at, at intentionally you know that's an intentional it wants me to cringe you know but like when he kills people i'm like okay i mean some of the effects look good i appreciate the creativity in some of them but it's just yeah and and with this i always cared man i really love the look of this predator just the the mouth you know the one of the things that the predator that the that they are really unique about the prayer have always been the mandrels, which I had forgotten. But the isn't that the right word, mandrel? Hold on for a second. I'm just really quick. Up, oh. mandible. I think is the word. Yes, I managed to remember that. That's the yeah yeah. You know, I I just rewatched the the this documentary about the first Predator and apparently you know Stan Winston designed it James Cameron suggested mandibles you know because they were next to each other on a plane as, as yeah as Stan was drawing the the design for the, the Predator and yeah James Cameron said I've always wanted to see something with mandibles and yeah, you know, they're memorable and yeah, I I get that not everybody likes how they they did this one, but you know, it's a different predator. That's why it's it's different. You know, this it's not like in the in AVP where the predators are teenagers and they don't even have metal claws that are good for cutting aliens, you know, and this stuff and it's like who wants to watch that? But here, yeah, the predator's different, but it's not diff it's not bad different. It's just in it's interesting different, you know. And the fact, yeah, the the bigger mandibles, you know, yeah, I I thought really, I, there's a very inhuman kind of just the the way that yeah yeah the the mandibles or is it just me? They I feel like they look even more inhuman than they did before. Before it kind of looked like, okay, well it has a lot, it just, it has like teeth that stick out here, but this one doesn't, seems like it doesn't have a lower jaw, it just has the mandibles, and it's just, yeah, and, and the way that they open so far, you know, reminds me kind of like a, a Reaper from, from Blade 2, you know, just really opens out far, and just, yeah, but but yeah the the um, let's see what was the thing that I wanted to oh yeah yeah about the about the look I like that the it doesn't have a futuristic mask it just it has like I mean that's got to be like part of the skull of an animal it killed right and it's it put the the laser thing on top of that. Now, yeah, and you know she talks about chewing off a leg, and we're like, oh, is she really gonna, do, you know? And then she frees them without that, with the clever, snappy line. I'm smarter than that. And the three bombs versus the French, and it's like. It does have a little bit of that thing of like, why are you, why are you moving towards something that's making such an ominous noise? But I mean, that's that's how these movies go, you know. You you gotta apply. I, I mean, look at how bad at tactics the rebels in the first movie are. You know, yes, I realize that the, you know, Arnie and his gang are their team, his unit are incredible at what they do but still like some of the the guards and yeah some of the rebels they're just I, what are they doing how how are they losing this easily you know it's because it's an it's a hollywood action movie so that's the but yeah you know the fact that like it pops out and just the the and we 
let's see. I think yeah, it cuts to like really far away and just see the the explosions. Yeah, and she saves the dog from the French. Holy crap, that was tense. That entire bit with like she throws the and and kills and just, oh, wow. Like throughout, I was on the edge of my seat. My my heart was in my throat. I was just holy crap. And Naru heals the interpreter. And the way she talks to him, you know that thing doctors do when they talk to the patient and make him feel okay? Bedside manner, yeah. Her sucks, dude. And the cold blood hides the interpreter at first. And she uses that in the fight too. Let's see. And the predator threatens the dog, and thankfully it was safe. Like, I literally, I was sitting there thinking, they're actually going to do it. They're going to do it, because they've been so brutal throughout this movie. They've, you know, they've showered us with gore, showered the predator with blood. Now, yeah, and, and we see that the gun wasn't loaded, and wow. So, you know, she, she points it. And clicks uh, like, oh no, you know, but she she has to do something to, you know, so she like yells to to distract the predator instead. And the um, you know she loads it and and goes over the thing. She's just been, okay, put the power in, not too much, not too little, and and the whole thing, you know. And Tabe tells her to leave and kills him. So in part, she fights to avenge her brother, and she really did leave when he said to. I honestly. I thought that was going to be the part where, you know, yeah, where she just immediately fights. But no, she she went back and, you know, washed the blood off and then she made the decision. So I, I really appreciate, you know, it, it shows she really was very scared of it. And then she makes the decision and... and you know, crafts this plan, and, you know, she tries to follow it, not everything works. You bled my brother, so now you bleed. You picked the wrong Comanche to piss off, dude. Now you're the one who's bait. It thinks I'm not a threat, and that's what makes me dangerous. Very true, minorities that no one thinks much of can do incredible things. And it steps right next to her. That was, wow, I, it's, yeah. And takes the head of the Frenchman, and she shoots it right in the head. Like, holy crap! Like, if she at some point decides that she no longer wants to be a hunter, I think she could be one hell of an executioner. Like, she just, like, she puts it right, you know, right against the neck and pulls the trigger, and blows it. Holy crap! That was friggin' brutal. That was. Holy crap. Now, and you know, to, to anyone who says, oh, it's not very fair. Well, a predator itself doesn't play fair. It's much stronger and faster than most of the things it hunts. Let's see. Just utterly epic climactic confrontation. She leaps on it, axes it a few questions, lures it to leap at the tree where she set a trap. And she knows how it uses the shield, so she uses that against it and manages to use it against it. Wow. And cuts off one of its hands and almost cuts her head off with the shield. And she grabs one of the mandibles, rips it off, stabs it with... Holy crap. And it's like, that's clever. Because, yeah, if it uses, you know, it, it's a tooth that it uses to, like, chew into stuff. That tooth is gonna be sharp, you know. Uh, yeah, if uh, let's see, is it? Yeah, I'm thinking it's like the the front teeth rather than the the ones in, you know the ones in the back are like good for chewing, but the front ones can cut through stuff, and that's yeah, you know. And I'm yeah, I'm pretty, I I could imagine she might have learned that from like, I mean, you could hypothetically do that with a lion you know if you under the exact right circumstances because the the tooth isn't difficult to break off you know 
the it's it's a yeah you know because like two teeth don't really have to be difficult to break off because there's not very many situations where someone grabs one of your teeth and tries to yank it off you know usually when the teeth are close to the other animal that means you won and you're eating and it's probably dead so yeah I do think the bit with the shield like it cut through the the tree extremely quick oh wait yeah yeah no it cut through the tree extremely quickly but the rock it's cutting through slower I th yeah I think that checks out even if it cut, cut through a tree immediately cutting through rock might take just a tiny bit long and it is only it is only a few seconds but yeah yeah I think that does check out yeah yeah because like if you hit like in the you know in the first movie Arnie takes this branch and tries to bash it you know he's going for the head but it holds up uh, uh, an arm and the the branch breaks across it you know if he did that with a rock if the rock wouldn't break just like this yeah anyway fetch yeah <laughs> And she chokes it with the rope and yanks it into the mud to drown. And it's like, you know, if something within walking distance of my home was something I almost drowned in, yeah, I'd make a mental note of where it was. I would be able to find it and avoid it, you know, if I was half asleep. So that, yeah. And, and that is like, at first mentally she just, you know, said, so, okay, never, you know, never touch that exact bit of, of the mud again because I might sink in. But then when she laid this plan, yeah, she think of, yeah. Yeah, people who characterize this climax as a straight one-on-one -on -one fight were simply not paying attention. Like it, I. She's constantly using clever trickery, which is how Arnie beat it as well. And she set up the mask so it shoots us up in the head. Let's see. Since, you know, since the, yeah, talk, the, uh, yeah, the, it goes for the red dots. And, you know, basically it wasn't thinking straight anymore after all the damage it took. And, I mean, it took a shot to the brain. It was sinking. Yeah, I've seen some people, oh, why does it act, uh, why does it make mistakes? It was shot in the head. That's, like, if, if you survive being shot in the head, it changes your, your, you know, the, like there was that one guy who survived getting a metal pole through his head and for the rest of his life people said he was a lot angrier than he was before. Now, let's see, and yeah, and you know, it's sinking so it might be like panicking. Yeah, I, I really, really love the, the climax, yeah, and Naru lets out a war cry awesome brings home the cut off head drew war paint on her face from its blood tells them they have to move to higher ground and i think this is a, a clever way because like if we never see another story about naru we can just accept you know maybe they encountered more predators maybe they didn't like you know she says there is a threat we have to move to higher ground i mean she could be talking about either or both the the trappers and the predators and yeah you know maybe she encountered like uh, i f yeah the the post uh, not post credits but the credits showed like three ships i think arriving so you know maybe 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 not you know and like eventually she you know she and her kind were you know decimated by the the colonizers but you know that's if they don't make more movies like comparatively like I don't want a sequel to Predators because I don't think it was that good of a movie but it's a really annoying sequel baity ending to not get sequels to it you know but no I, I don't think I don't think that's a, a good setup for for sequels you know I, I think the Predator left them fine enough but yeah I, I don't know I, I think Anyway, the the but yeah, 
they could they could use this as a soft reboot you know they could set a bunch of stories in yeah you know they could they could make a trilogy they could make several more movies where naru is one of the you know maybe next time it's of uh, you know the situation is slightly different you know obviously i don't want it to just be the exact same thing but yeah maybe Maybe there are more tribes next time. Maybe there are more colonizers. You know, maybe it ends up with just a few Comanche. Actually, yeah, maybe. Maybe they do this thing of like Comanche working with other Indian, other native tribes, and like maybe it's like one warrior from each and like a motley crew kind of but they're all really good at what they do kind of thing and they team up to take the predator down and it's like five on one fight kind of thing you know and then it could have more advanced weaponry and it would still be a reasonable fight you know, I've seen people say, you know, you could just set it like you could have one in medieval ages, you could have one, you know, you could do the Assassin's Creed thing of having in every different time period. And yeah, you know, I, th I think this is a really smart way to, to do it. I think it would be way less, uh, you know, the, the let's see. I'm not sure you could do much to do a sequel to the first one without, like, I mean, I feel like the, the fourth movie is basically trying to be a sequel to both one and two, not really three. The The second movie, you know, how do you do a sequel? Like, I, I don't think anybody wants to work with Gary Busey anymore. Uh, Danny Glover, I don't think... Does he still do action movies anymore? You know, and like, name me one other person from that. Oh, let's, no, please, please bring back the female cop. She can be raising that kid that they so condescendingly had the, the you know, predator not kill her for. Anyway, the, the, yeah, so the, yeah, I already mentioned, yeah, so, a sequel to, to Predators. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, that, that wouldn't have allowed them to do what they wanted with this. A sequel to The Predator. You know, I, uh, I don't think very many people like that movie, so they'd risk spending a lot of money on a movie that people didn't watch. You know, this was the same reason that the sequel to Prometheus was less you know, less Prometheus 2 and more Alien 5, you know, because, well, Alien Cells and I guess Prometheus, you know, Prometheus pissed off a lot of people. And, yeah, I'm not particularly a fan myself, but I've talked about that elsewhere. So, yeah, I, I think this was the, the right way to try to, you know, maybe this reinvigorates the franchise. I would definitely say that's what Disney hopes for. I think, if if I had to guess, Dan Trachtenberg and Amber Midthunder both probably think it's okay if this is the only one, but they'd like to do more. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think I read that he wanted. Anyway, yeah, the the um, yeah, you know, you can. I mean, you you can set stories before this one. This is just the story of the first time this predator went to Earth. Like, there's no indication that this is the first time they found Earth. Like, let's hypothetically say, oh, they, they just found Earth, right? This, you know, in 1719. Are they really going to drop just one predator with very little weaponry? Come on. They're going to they're gonna drop a bunch, and they're going to go off in different directions. And, like, you know, use the, the wrist thing. Probably has a radio, you know... I wonder what Predator music is like. Anyway, you know, radio back and forth and figure out about the plan. Or they, like, scan it. You know, there. this is not the first time that Predators have been on Earth, period. You know. And, 
let's see. Yeah, you know, you could you could use this to set other other sequels, other prequels, and such. And yeah, you know, uh, maybe an interesting way would be have a bunch of stories over the course of hundreds, maybe thousands of years, and have like things that you know, have like cultural things where the predators inspire myth and legend and such, which I think, ah, let's see, was it Screen Crush maybe that did a video where they talked about that the, you know, the, the predator ship in this, yeah, Screen Crush, is like the Firebird, I think he said, you know, the, yeah. So, right, anyway, back to notes. Incredible ending. Like her brother said, she sees everything. She's very perceptive and observant. She learned from mistakes, both her own and others. She made a plan, carried it out. Not everything didn't work perfectly. She wasn't trying to make fetch happen, but she corrected for it. This is easily the best, most satisfying climax of all the solo movies, and definitely better than the AVP films. But yeah, the, uh, let's see, what was one thing that I... Right, right, the, you know, we don't see her set up the mask after she shoots it in the head, but she does pick it up. You know, she goes up, shoots it in the back of the head, picks off, picks up the mask, runs off, and then the next time we see the mask is when it's sinking and the, you know, yeah. Now, maybe the reason the Predator doesn't have the tech we're used to is that it was developed in the 300 years between this and Predator 1. I thought the movie found a great balance between showing the Predator, since that is part of what we're here for, but not overexposing it to the point where we got bored, you get used to it and bored by it. So, yeah, like Predator 1 and Predator 3, but not 2, 4, or you know, there's Predator 1 and 2. As others pointed out, when Naru faced the Predator, part of why it lost is because it fought a bear, trappers and such that managed to hurt it, some of them badly, like the bear. So yeah, it's not perfect. There are some well-reasoned entries in the IMDb Goof section as I record this. All of them are... I just realized, I think I forgot to say how I... Yeah. I'm pretty sure I forgot to... I, I'll just put it here then. So, worst to best, I enjoy all of them, but the original and this are the only good movies. The entire list of solos. Predator 3, Predator 4, Predator 2, Predator 1, and Prey. Now, the... I guess I'll just do a really quick check of the IMDb goofs. So... Let's see. Yeah, so the. Um, uh, what was the. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see. There's three factual errors one incorrectly regarded as goofs, and one revealing mistakes. So the three factual errors, you know, the, the thing is, you know, the medicine that lowers body temperature, you know, if your body temperature is low, you know, hypothermia, you know, you're shivering, you're slurring. Yeah, slurred speech, shallow breathing, weak pulse, clumsiness, lack of coordination. More obviously, Naru isn't dealing with that. So, you know, yeah, that, I mean, the mud also isn't, I, I forget, was it because it didn't cover enough or wasn't thick enough? I, I forget, but they, you know, yeah, those are, and yeah, one of the Frenchmen hobbles back to camp on, with his lower leg completely severed. He would have bled out and died long before making it there. Let's see. And even if the Predator's weapon stopped the bleeding while embedded in the wound, once Naru removed it, there would be nothing stopping the bleeding, and he would have died then. Naru is knocked out twice by blows to the head that would cause a concussion or other serious brain injury, yet she's shown to be fine, physically active, very little rest. So, incorrectly regarded as a goof. Let's see. Yeah, some point out that a car cartridge is pack picked up when, in fact, is some rolled tobacco on like a cigar, which you see one of the trappers smoking later in the movie, which is when the character realized they were the one who had skinned the buffalo. 
and I the cartridge is picked up. Oh, right. The uh, yeah, okay. And the revealing mistake. In the camp, never senses the predator behind her and sidesteps it with a it's like narrowly missing hers in a close-up. This does not account for the extra width width of both her and the predator's arms. If their legs came that close, their arms would bump into each other and it would know she was there. That is true. So yeah. I appreciate, you know, no no one has or no. I don't know if no one has entered something that's just hateful and nonsensical, but you know, it's possible it just hasn't been accepted, but anyway. But yeah, you know, if you... I'm going to sound like I'm trying to both sides it here. If you look at, uh, you know, a lot of action movies have these kinds. But yeah, there are definitely some of these. So, the... That brings us to the final section notes taken before watching. So let's see the here we go. Yeah, so, according to fellow critics, it's not that interesting to see the Predator win, so I, hope, I don't hope to see that, and I don't, I agree, I don't know why people are that excited about that idea. I guess just for the variety, the movie is all about these two hunters trying to outmaneuver each other. The references, the sequels have to the original, just make you want to watch the original again. R right, that was, yeah, that was something I read... That, that was a criticism of the other movies, not of this one. And, yeah, I just noted I want to see if that does happen here, and it doesn't. I, you know, I'm definitely going to watch the first one again as well. The Prayer doesn't have all the stuff we're used to from the other movies, but he does have some cool ga gadgets. Also, he is huge. At first, the prayer is invisible, but we see different parts of his body uncloak as it's hunting over the course of the movie until we get the big reveal. Sounds a lot like Halloween 1978 and the original prayer movie. Great. And, yeah. Did it. Let's see. Effective predator POV shots. Not too many. French trappers in the third act felt jarring. There are a number of encounters with Predator where the lead and others are terrified and don't understand what's going on because it's such advanced technology. Okay, I have a bunch of notes. I think I'm going to go a little bit faster from the... Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so according to a little critic here, The woke agenda that is there to constantly spew anti-male dialogue and cliches of the type every two minutes. You know, it's funny. I don't remember conservatives being angry when the second Sin City movie came out, which featured the lead character Dwight, who was constantly spewing anti-female dialogue. And various critics have said, in actuality, if a primitive tribe would have contacted made contact with an advanced species like this, they would have worshipped or feared it like God. Oh, you mean the way that conservative Christians used to think HIV was sent by God to take out the gays? Just trying to add some equilibrium to the religious commentary. They didn't worship the settlers who also had technology that they'd never seen before. They tried to trade with them, and when the settlers turned on them, they fought back. Having all this in mind throughout the movie, it will constantly take you out of the immersion like it did to me. Only if you let it, as I'm going to get into in a little bit, all of these movies have unrealistic elements. Once again, I enjoy them all. But I don't think they're flawless. The Predator also becomes a better hunter of the course of the movie, like Naru, who is the titular of the prey. Naru, the Predator, you might be surprised. Naru avoids the prayer for most of it, and only at the end decides to hunt it and fight it. 
long before anyone had a chance to watch the movie, this was being written off as being bad based on extremely shallow things. As soon as we got the first trailer, which confirmed that this one is going to be about a Native American woman fighting a predator using the tools they had access to back then, a bunch of conservatives immediately balked at the idea, forgetting that one of the big takeaways from the original movie is that this squad of hyper-masculine men with military training cannot defeat the predator with modern technology. Arnold had to use the kinds of weapons and traps that they would have in 1719. This is literally the most logical course to take. How many times does it need to be hyper-masculine men fighting to take out predators? He had four solo movies like that, and both of the Alien vs. Predator movies also had characters like that. Same for the games. And depending on your country, you may have access to the first solo movies and both of the Alien vs. Predator movies on the same streaming service that you watch this on. So just watch any of the other ones. You got what you wanted four times over, and you're whining that we progressives get what we want once in this franchise? The vast majority of real-life armed conflicts were not decided by how many or how big muscles the fighters had. Cleverness and spirit play a big part. Just because we're used to seeing muscle-bound dudes in the lead of movies like this, and for them to win regardless of what they fight, doesn't mean that it's the only or best way to do this. You know what? I would have had a ton of respect if the first movie ended with Arnold losing. If even Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't take it out. But at the end, it's, I mean, the movie ends like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. He he beats the enemy despite the odds, you know. Also, it hasn't been about muscle-bound muscle -bound huge dude stopping the prayer since the original movie. I love Arnie, but the idea that he'd be better for this situation, rather than just that he's what we're used to seeing, is ridiculous. Real-life Native American hunters could kill bears with their weapons. The other movies are about people who are used to killing humans with guns. I especially find it hilarious when conservatives criticize the movie, well, the trailer, saying that it doesn't look realistic, as if that was ever a goal of this franchise. You know the first film ends with Arnie outrunning a nuke, right? And to the people who say that it doesn't make sense that the prayer would fight someone so small compared to itself, pointing out how much bigger than... Amber Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the first movie. When was the last time you actually watched the movie? The only thing he uses his muscles for that actually helps against the Predator is setting up traps. He does try to hit him once with a large stick, but the Predator blocks it, and that's the last time and the only time he ever tries to defeat it with his own muscles, other than the one that matters. So it stands to reason that someone who isn't muscly could fight the predator as well, especially someone who's used to setting up traps and using the survival techniques that Arnold ends up relying on when everything else fails him. Like, she literally fights the predator by luring it into traps that she would use to trap animals that she would then cook and eat. You know, this is... Like, it's, it's, she's basically applying her skill set to a new situation. Where Arnold, I mean, yeah, he knows about this stuff, but he hasn't, he hasn't used these old, you know, actually, I saw the, the abridged script he, he called, the, the author of that called them Ewok traps, which, yeah. I saw one conservative sneering at the idea that the soldiers in the trailer might turn out to be the real villains, not the pres predator, which didn't turn out to be the case. It's just, you know, conservatives online, they just love spreading hate based on things they don't actually know that much about. Like, literally the opposite happens. Like, the predator hunts the trappers just like it hunts the, the Comanche. And... In fact, she uses one of the French trappers to lure in the predator. Anyway, yeah, that guy must not have a problem with colonization, which is responsible for an extreme amount of death and pain throughout human history. If predators were real, they would not be as harmful as colonizers. And before you say that the predator movies used to be apolitical, the first movie says that politicians abandon American troops, something that was thought to be the case in Vietnam at the time, a very open wound. If you're someone who still believes that is the case, watch Renegade Cut's video on Rambo. The second movie is about how bad crime is in the inner cities and the cops are willing and able to solve it, but the higher-ups just won't let them. The third movie is saying that the American-Israeli military can be just as cutthroat as people who kill 
people for the drug cartels. The fourth movie is about how the American military abandons those of its troops that it traumatized through their military service. So this isn't even a th the first in the series to be critical of the military of the West. The first Alien vs. Predator movie is about that in 2004 there are still white people who think that the pyramids couldn't have been built by people they consider to be lesser. And the second one is about how a small southern town in America definitely has enough guns to fight off outer space creatures. Maybe because these are conservative. Conservatives don't call them political, just consider them to be normal. The original movie is an attempt at coming to terms with the outcome of the Vietnam War. It appears that this movie is an attempt at coming to terms with the monstrous things colonizers did to indigenous people. In the original movie, the Predator was a stand-in for Viet Cong, now colonizers. Arguably. Since it does also have colonizers. And some of the conservatives also say that this and other movies like it should, uh, let's see, should not do the story of a minority individual trying to prove themselves. They point to the line from the trailer, why do you want to hunt because you will think that I can't, which, you know, I saw a trailer reaction where he pointed out that's a badass line. I absolutely agree with that. I wonder how many of these conservatives would be freaking out if, that guy, if it was a guy saying it. Why is if it bleeds we can kill it okay, but because you all think that I can't not. It's an underdog story. Americans love those. It's about a lead who is amazing at physically demanding stuff that isn't dancing. Americans love those. You know, the, the reason that it has to be, it, it can't be about dancing, is that a lot of dudes, straight dudes, do not think, you know, that, that are like, okay, yeah, but if you, if you can, like, fight, you can hurt people. You can't hurt people by dancing. And then Spider-Man 3 came out, and they were proven very wrong. You know, yeah. And the other Predator movies were also underdog stories about, you know, a lead who's excellent at physically demanding stuff. People are acting like they turned into an artsy-fartsy black-and-white low-key drama or something. And the funny thing is, some of these conservatives like movies where men have to prove themselves. So really, the common denominator is they don't like seeing minority individuals trying to prove themselves. It's not that they don't like stories where the lead has to prove themselves. The critical drinker dislikes the trailer, pointing to that as a problem, but he gave a positive review to The Tomorrow War and the aspect that the Chris Pratt character has to prove himself. In fact, a lot of critics hated it, and he seemed to like it in part just because, you know, oh, you know, finally there's a father who, you know, th this is a movie that doesn't say that all fathers are bad fathers, and it's like, I think you just, maybe you just need to talk to someone about these things. I don't, I don't think it is, I, I don't think the problem is that movies are as bad as he thinks he is, they are. I think he just needs to talk to someone who can help him deal with these feelings. I'm not saying that to, you know, make fun of him. Now, the, let's see, what was the other, ah, crap, there was something else. What was the other thing? Right, I, I, you know, for sure there are some movies today that are really, really bad, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I I do have some more to say about him, but I don't, that's not going to, the following is not to counter. I do think that he just needs to talk to someone. I've seen him make good points, but it's hard to take someone seriously who reviews trailers as if he's reviewing the entire show or the entire movie. As if the trailer gives him all of the information rather than teasing it and whining both when they give a lot of information and when they don't. Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, not Obi-Wan as far as, you know, it seemed like he waited until that one was out before he, you know, gave a, did a full review. Anyway, he even did this for the Snyder Cut, even though a lot of that trailer is the same as the original trailers for the theatrical cut, and a lot of that stuff wasn't in that cut. Brilliant idea. Review a four-hour show or movie based on a trailer that's a few minutes long. 
And I'm not, I realize he wasn't the only person freaking out over that trailer. And yes, I do think it was wrong for all of them. I, the moment I saw the trailer, I was like, are you going to show us something new? Or are you just going to tell us that there's, you know, good stuff in here that should have been like, yeah, anyway. He said Miss Marvel would be better if it was about someone whose culture says not to use her superpowers, which I would define as her self-actualizing, but also that Prey doesn't make sense because it's about someone whose culture says not to hunt, which, again, I would call her self-actualizing. In some cases, he isn't consistent. He just doesn't like minorities and will complain no matter what, especially if they're in the lead, but also if they're present at all. You know, he said that Valkyrie and Hela take Ragnarok from Thor when they're just there to serve the themes. They're the side characters. It's clearly him. You know, it is clearly Thor's movie. And in his video on Loki, he takes issue with the cop who hit Loki, making him move in slow motion, his face wobbling. First, he says they're having a woman humiliate Loki when she's using technology. And Loki being humiliated has been a running gag throughout the movies. He also calls her fat when that's muscle, which would make sense. Like, she's basically a street-level cop, so sometimes she has to restrain strong people. And meanwhile, for the trailer of this, he said that Naru is too small to be believable in fighting someone bigger than her. So, which is it? If a non-white woman is fighting someone bigger than her, does her muscle make her look fat, or does her small stature make it unbelievable? And keep in mind, these are both, like... Loki and the Predator are both much stronger than humans of the same size as they are. You know, if if there were humans as big as the Predator, they still wouldn't be quite as strong as it. And to underline, in addition to muscle, the street level cop also uses technology to help even the odds. And he said that Naru is... Let's... Yeah, Naru is too small to believably fight a prayer in a one on one fight when nothing in the trailer suggests that they're going to. Watch it again. There's not a single shot of the two of them just punching each other. There is a shot of it leaping at her wrist blade first, but she ducks. That's the closest it gets. That doesn't mean she's trying to fight it up close. We do see it take on colonizers at close range, so they could have shown it fighting her one on one if that was something that you know they figured would draw people to watch the movie. You know, the movie at no point implies that she is physically strong enough to take on a predator in that way. Once again, inconsistent application of logic. The only consistent part is that he doesn't like minorities. And before I move on from the critical drinker, I want to bring up that he referred to COVID, I believe that was in his Ms. Marvel trailer video, snarkily as the virus of unknown origin. Now, Organized Chaos interpreted this as COVID denialism and addressed that, so I'll direct you to this. His video on that, if that's your interpretation. I mean, in general, his organized chaos does great videos. I think that Critical Drinker was mocking the people who say we shouldn't focus so much on whether or not it originated from China. I'm someone who firmly believes in determining who is to blame for bad things, as this is the first step in fixing those things, but ranting to regular people about how the virus is the fault of the Chinese, which is the thing that we progressives are trying to stop people like Donald Trump from doing when we say not to focus so much on China, led to an increase in hate crimes, including murders against Asian Americans. If this wasn't what he meant, he should be more careful to word things so it couldn't be interpreted that way. I'm not saying that the critical drinker himself would go out and commit violence against minorities. I haven't seen evidence that he would. If it's out there, please direct me to it. But he is fine with providing cover for the ones who do. For the criticisms of the critical drinker, I recommend the already mentioned Organized Chaos, Turf Nation, Phantom Felix's video, The Critical Drunkard's Lousy Review, in quotes, of Loki, Damien Walter's video, the, pro uh, the Problem with Reactionary Reviewers Like The Critical Drinker, and Karina McDaniel's video, Critical Drinker Should Lay Off the Alcohol. Right, and uh, actually, uh, I forgot to put that in here, but there's also the video called The Critical Drinker is Not a Critical Thinker. I'll just add that real quick.
also a lot of conservative guys love the Rocky movies, and certainly the original is amazing. Those movies are all, not only, but all, about men trying to prove that they're better than a lot of men, a lot of people think they are. But the conservative guys can imagine being Rocky, they can't imagine being Nauru. The first movie explicitly states that Rocky will not be able to engage in any more professional boxing after that yet match, and yet he goes on to in some of the sequels, not going to spoil here which. So why is it okay for a past-his-prime guy to continue fighting professionally, but a woman with less muscles at the prime of her life can't do what she does here? Let's see. Yeah, so some people said the prayer shouldn't be hunting Amber, it only hunts the best of the best, which is true of the first and third, but not really the second and fourth. Or that she can't stop it. You know, the, yeah, the movie has her gradually improving her skills over the course of the movie. And, you know, there's also some trial by fire. You can do things in extreme situations you didn't think you could which is arguably what happens with Arnold at the end. And I do think that that's a more interesting story than, you know, as I've said, yet again taking characters who are already extremely capable and just pitting them against the Predator. I think it worked well in the first movie when we didn't know what the Predator was. I don't think you can do that more than once and keep it interesting, or at least they haven't been able to in the movie so far. And, you know, in the trailer she says... It knows how to hunt, I know how to survive, so she's not facing it head on, applied directly to the forehead, the way that the other leads of the franchise do. She hides from it, lures it into a false sense of security. You know, before the movie was referred to as Prayer 5, it was only referred to as Prey. It thinks she's just Prey. And she proves it wrong. Let's see. And... Right, yeah. I've seen some conservatives react to the first trailer with some questions, so I'll try to answer them. Why did she go after the bear alone? Because no one would hunt with her, which was shown early in the trailer. Why is the trailer showing her fail to uh, failing early on? It's setting up the conflict. Action movie trailers tend to do that. The trailer's deliberately showing very little of the Predators, because the more we see him, the less interesting he is to look at. We get used to him. The idea with this trailer is that we see she is not yet as skilled as she wants to be, and you know the movie isn't part about getting her getting there. Why is a predator hunting Native Americans instead of colonizers? The trailer doesn't show that the predator is doing that. People are guessing. We see in the trailer it kills some natives. That doesn't mean it was hunting them. They might have just got in its way. It kills people who got in its way in all of the movies except for the original. Now, I've seen some people say that we should expect little of the movie because it's only the director's second movie. You know that James Cameron's second movie was Aliens, right? Christopher Nolan's was Memento, Tarantino's was Pulp Fiction. I don't think I need to go on listing, but do note that these were also genre movies that no one really expected to be amazing for various reasons. Labors of Love by passionate, talented directors. So the series has always relied on Hollywood action logic. How can Dutch and his team avoid being hit when they attack the rebels? How can they carry massive machine guns? How do they have so much ammo? And the prayer itself must be able to travel at insane speeds in that spaceship to get to Earth from the nearest habitable, you know, I forget, star, I want to say. Like, I don't remember the exact number, but if something like if you traveled at the speed of light all of the way it would still take several decades like a generation to travel from the very nearest star to earth or vice versa and that's you know yeah i mean short of like maybe it's like wormhole which is you know the the fourth movie basically said the reason the Prayers can travel so fast and so far and such is wormholes, or up, implied it, anyway. 
But no, it's not until now that the heroes aren't white men that we apply logic. Okay, to be fair, you know, the there are prominent men that aren't white in the second movie, but yeah. And the lead is probably uh, Danny Glover. But yeah, you know, back when it was white men, or white passing people. Okay, um, close to being done. Yeah, gonna speed run through the rest. Um, the Supreme Court has taken away abortion access from anyone who isn't rich enough to go outside the law. This will affect hundreds of millions of women, but the things conservatives are whining about is that they've now made a woke predator movie. This series has not had a good movie released in over 30 years. This movie is not going to be what destroys the franchise. If this movie makes young women feel like they can go, you know, they can f fight to be seen and heard, that would be amazing. Not many days ago, Nichelle Nichols passed and she actually inspired young women because of a role that some people thought a black woman shouldn't have. I mean, I'm not saying I know for sure, but I feel like people who think that women shouldn't, that, that the these medical decisions shouldn't be between a woman and her doctor, I mean, no one's saying that they should be able to, I haven't, you know, people are trying to ensure abortion during the first two trimesters, not in the third, when the baby is viable outside, you know, not, not, when, not in the third, not when the baby is viable outside the womb, you know, but the, yeah, you know, people who don't think that women should be allowed to make that decision themselves must not think very much of women, must not think they can be the hero. Also, Maggie Mae Fish did an excellent video recently that's apropos. I'm gonna real quick gonna find yeah, it's called The Hero's Journey is Bullshit. I've made videos talking about the flaws with all the prayer movies. I definitely think that the others have much bigger problems than this does. Like you know, when I watch the first movie, I just straight up have to turn off all logic, all, like, there's so many laws of physics violated, there's so many things that just don't make any sense. For this one, I really didn't have to try to not think about those things. That's one of the things that, in my opinion, makes this better. Let's see. I've seen some joke that maybe this will be a female predator to further the female empowerment theme. First of all, I don't think that would be a problem. Second of all, what makes you sure that the other predators are male? Based on the movie Aliens, I would definitely say that the typical xenomorph is male and the queen is the only female since she's the only one seen to lay eggs, but not a single theatrically released official predator movie directly tells us that the predators are male. For all we know, they're female. Or maybe they are no, there are no genders in the predator, predator world. Or anything in between those. Why is male seen as the default and female has to be a divergence? And to anyone watching this who sees gender that way, can you maybe now see why it matters to us progressives to have clearly female leads fighting the predators? A ton of people have never even considered the possibility that the predators are female. Why is that? Because they're strong? Because they're badass? Because they're good hunters? I can point to female human beings who fit those attributes. Yeah, and, and one critic said, the predator for some reason thinks that a woman wouldn't be capable of killing her. Okay, so I guess there are some conservatives who think that that's what's wrong, not that the predator would be, you know, that, that she wouldn't be capable of killing her. Anyway, also, the movie doesn't say that for sure that it's her gender. It could easily be 
her size, the fact that she's alone, not armed, not in a fighting stance, like every single, again, just turn off the movie you made in yourself inside your head and watch this movie point to me where should it have perceived her as a threat? Where is she clearly armed and not using like the medicine to lower her body temperature? I agree that that doesn't make sense, but the mud never made sense either. And I remember, like, not 87, because I was one year old at the time, but I remember from the 90s people were talking about that the mud thing doesn't make sense. I don't, you know, people have always known that the mud didn't make sense. I agree that this isn't good either, but they felt they had to do something. Let's see. Yeah, some say it's not a good origin story. The director doesn't consider it an origin story. That's a marketing thing. I realize not everyone realizes this. So, the movie going to stream instead of theaters is going to hurt theaters, but Disney wanted to try to win the stream awards. See, that's actually a point I agree with against the the you know the film the film or the release, I guess. But anyway, yeah. I have absolutely no problems with anyone making this argument against the film. You might even say that this is a really gross thing to do for a movie based on indigenous people specifically fought with underhanded methods by colonizers rather than in a fair fight which movie theater tickets arguably represents you know you either buy a ticket or you don't you buy a ticket for specific movies and you choose not to buy for other movies I try not to be unreasonable the only real issue I have is when people hate the movie based on its starring minorities and claiming that progressives only like it because it's minorities as if it's that binary I haven't personally come across a single positive review that just said that they liked it because of minorities they all point to things about the movie that they think are well done like just because a number of conservatives hate a movie just because it's got diversity doesn't mean that progressives love a movie just because it's got diversity and let's see. yeah and some said that how can she defeat a predator with you know these fast extras moves and simple weapons when soldiers couldn't stop one with modern weapons when she fights it directly she knows what she's dealing with like Dutch at the end of the first in general the climax of these films is like that and like in the first and third movie, it's more about physical prowess than guns. And some said that she's a Mary Sue. Doesn't fit the definition. She's not liked by everyone. She doesn't master everything without struggling. Also, remind me, what were the character flaws of the characters in the first one, other than Dylan? And don't you think that it is a character flaw for her that she spends so much of the movie trying to avoid the predator because she's scared of it, scared that she can't stop it, though she knows it's dangerous. She overcomes that and fights it at the end she's, and is able to defeat it, though at the start of the movie she had trouble hurting much less dangerous prey. She starts out over-eager, firing an arrow. Uh, or, right, yeah. Um, she starts out over-eager and ends up able to take down the predator. That's character growth. The characters in the first movie... Let's see. Yeah, we're, we're trying to stop the Predator from the very moment that they're sure that it exists. As soon as they're sure that there's something out there that isn't human, they start trying to kill it. How can this woman be better than all the men? Tons of American action movies are about the lead outdoing everyone else, but you don't hear conservatives complaining about it when it's a man. Yeah, so I already mentioned in the review that I saw people saying the movie is boring. So, once again, if anyone who was watching this video agrees with that assessment, can you please explain it? I wasn't able to find any user reviews that actually explain that. They just say that it's boring. And again, I haven't read all, you know, I mentioned earlier there's like 500, 600 something reviews on IMDb. I didn't read all of those, but, the, you know, I read the 100 top rated and none of them said how it's boring. You know, the plot moves fast. The Predator is introduced very early on. There's a ton of action and suspense. I'm willing to hear you out, even debate this, as long as you don't say anything hateful towards a minority. I legitimately do not understand 
how anyone finds this boring. Like, at the very start, I thought that more of the movie would be her gathering or her, like, trying to talk other people into the, you know, her being allowed to hunt and such, but it really isn't all that much. Everything I thought would happen did. Really? Like, I figured that it would end with Naru winning against the Predator, and the trailer told me Trappers would show up, but everything else surprised me. And, you know, I already mentioned that, you know, you had some conservatives guessing that the movie would end with the the Predator and Naru fighting Trappers together when literally that, you know, nothing like that actually happened. So clearly some people didn't guess all the, the things that, yeah. The dialogue's too modern. We don't need a cook. Would they really not have said that? I mean, women were cooks in their societies. Like, I don't know. Um, anyway, the predator is taken down too easily. You watch the first one. That one is taken down more easily. The reason they can't stop it sooner is they can't detect it and don't know what it can do. The fight itself is really short. Didn't explain the changes to the lore. Okay, if you tell me that you went to, you know, after Alien vs. Predator came out, you still went to a movie that heavily features a Yaucha hoping for more, and not less lore, I fully wholeheartedly believe you are full of it. Why should we care about seeing dying animals? Because of basic human empathy, I guess you've never encountered it. I don't think it makes a movie more interesting for there to be more than one predator. I love it in video games. I'm not sure any of the comics I read were made better by multiple predators, but it definitely doesn't make a movie more tense than it, you know, it's already nearly impossible to kill a predator. For there to be multiple of them just gets ridiculous. If you're going to have more than one, it should be like in the second one where they actively choose not to attack him because they respect him for killing a predator. Predators... Right. Predator 3 and Predator 4 are not better movies because there's more than one predator. They would be better movies if each of them featured just one. So I hope this movie only has one and it has more. Well, I hope it's like the second one where they just respect the skill of a human killing a predator. Not like, and and unlike, yeah, Prayer 3 and Alien vs. Prayer 1, I hope it doesn't have a prayer work with a human, so I'm really relieved about that, yeah. And, yeah, the, you know, ultimately we only do see the one in the movie itself, and then the ending credits, there's that visual of the, you know, of, of Predators, yeah, coming, coming to the... Yeah, and what was the other thing that I, Let's... right, right, for, for Predator 3, I had completely forgotten until this most recent viewing, it's such an anticlimax when, like, cause, because there are four Predators, you have three Predators die, yeah, yeah, three Predators die in a very short space of time, and it's like, Look, I get it. You wanted, you wanted a predator to die fighting a yakuza. You wanted a predator to die falling for a trap and being beaten to death by. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I'm a big fan of his. Um, real, real quick. Adrian Brody. And they wanted to see one of the super predators or yeah I think they were called super predators defeat a regular predator but it goes by so quick like you when when you spend an entire movie building up to something and it's the death it's the epic death of one predator or terminator or alien it hits really hard you can't just throw in a bunch like you can do that with aliens with xenomorphs but I yeah 
Now, since we the viewer already know about the Predator, the movie, yeah, it, we we see it very very early in the movie. You know, in the in the first movie, it builds up to the first. I mean, there's there's build up in this as well, but the first real clear indication that there are predators in this very very early, and the movie doesn't demystify the predator, which it's the f you know. Yeah, all three of the sequels have done that in both AVP movies. Now, let's see. Yeah, it's, uh, so far, Predator 4 is the only movie in the franchise where the protagonist and antagonist immediately know about the Predator, learn about him very early on, and... Yeah, I, I don't think it would have completely worked for this one. It would have been too much if she spent that long, uh, you know, dealing with something that she was that scared by and only at the end does she fight so yeah i believe video games like avp2 are the only place the predator can get detailed complex storylines uh, without it demystifying the creature so i hope the object creature and so yeah i'm relieved that they didn't try to do that here and yeah, in this movie, thankfully, the Predator never throws someone that it clearly want actually wants to kill instead of killing them, or at least attacking some other way, in some way other than throwing. You know, it doesn't happen in the first, but it does happen in... Uh, yeah, it happens in the other sequels and the first a AVP movie, but not the second. And, yeah, you know, the only... I already mentioned that I feel like the the ending of this movie can work whether they make a sequel or not. And yeah, only the other than this, it's only the first movie that that's true of all the other ones and sequel baby. So uh, in interview, the director said, "This is a David and Goliath story. The '80s original was wish fulfillment." That's definitely gonna set off some people, despite it being a true statement. Come on, people. The wish fulfillment aspect was one of the things we loved about it. Now, Amber saw the movie as the story of a very capable young woman. The director saw it as an underdog story. That difference of understanding doesn't really show. I, I was a little worried that it was gonna. So, chunks of Predator 3 and 4 feels like they're basically someone who loves the original movie, geeking out about all the aspects of the Predators. They love seeing the movies with human characters basically e there to either state or prove these aspects about the Predators. And I'm relieved to say this movie does not do that. And the movie, this, this Predator hunts. Yeah, I mean. It doesn't only hunt based on honor because sometimes it does just kill people. It it doesn't kill anyone that aren't themselves capable of killing, basically. But yeah, you know the like the the predators from movies two and three basically hunt because they just really like killing armed human beings. And thankfully this is not a predator hunting humans despite wanting to help us like in Predator 4. Wow, that was terrible. And yes, it is true that the predator seems to go for people with weapons and the ones stra that strapped it to a table and were prodding it but it did also kill keys so all the prior solo movies prior to this one every major character is memorable and this one not like Naru and Tabe are memorable especially Naru but no one else is and yeah I, I will frank I will completely I will be completely frank about that that I I wish they had given the other characters just a little bit more. I, I think it would have been great. I mean, they don't have to make good guys out of... Yeah. Now... You know, when I, I rewatched Alien vs. Predator 2, I'm pretty sure what the Predalien does to pregnant women, women in it is what conservatives think go on in abortion clinics. So every Predator solo film has a human being take on a Predator and win as the very climax of the movie. Depicts 
this and they've all been entertaining and appropriately big in scale each is bigger than the ones before it this one is not bigger than the ones before it but the hmm I guess it's roughly no the the one in the fourth movie is still the biggest of the of the solo movies but and and the one in predator 3 is probably also at least a little bit bigger than than this one but like i mentioned before this one is my favorite and yeah so both alien vs predator movies and predator 3 and 4 are very fan surfy say fan servicey this one isn't they they do a few really good, you know i it's I think it's Tabe who says if it bleeds we can kill it. But yeah, there's way less way less than in Predators 3 and 4. And yeah, so Predator 2 and 2 through 4 are action movies with some suspense. Predator Let's see. Is this a suspense-driven horror film? That's definitely how I would characterize the first movie. A suspense-driven horror film with action, rather than an action movie outright. Yes, I I think that is the, yeah. And the flintlock pistol from Pre the, the yeah Predator Two shows up. I haven't read the comic, but I've heard that it was a very popular comic. So yeah, some people are definitely going to be upset that this kind of I mean it, it doesn't seem like what was in the the comic and this movie can really like I've seen some people try to twist themselves uh, twist and contort themselves to to make it make sense but I think we just gotta you know accept that it seems like the people who had responsibility for that aspect for this either haven't read the you know maybe to them there is no predator stuff that isn't in the movies or maybe they thought this was better but i don't think this was made by people who wanted to honor that comic and you know i i love comic books but i do think we we got to not get too married to what's in the comic even if it says that it's canon if it's not said in one of the movies you know that's just not yeah and you know thankfully this doesn't I, like there's way worse lore in some of the other movies than than this one like the uh what's it called um yeah the whole avp idea with oh you know they would put you know, they, they made the, the pyramids and all this, you know, yeah. Now, yeah, so the, in interview, Amber talks about how bad it was to film the mud scene, and she's really, like, like, she could easily really make a huge deal out of how bad it was but she's yeah like she she really doesn't see, you know come off as an annoyed at yeah and yeah and an interview i think it was the producer said you know it doesn't it doesn't attack people who aren't armed or don't appear to be in a very good situation to fight back and you know yeah when it doesn't fight amber she's tied to a tree she doesn't have a gun you know those kinds of things and let's see I mean, the in other movies, the predators actually kill people that have no chance of fighting back. Where in this one, it actually does, you know, yeah. Anyway, 
so at the start of the first movie, every major character is basically extremely competent, the best at what they do, and then they face something that is better than them, but in this movie, the lead has room to grow and improve, and she faces something that is a bigger challenge than anyone on the planet has... Hmm. Yeah, anyone on the planet, unless other movies prove that. Anyway, yeah, that's a, a huge challenge. You know, in my opinion, this is a more interesting setup. Again, I... I do enjoy the the first movie and I do consider it a great movie but it's it's kind of ridiculous how they just have no flaws like think about how easy it would have been to give them ones like I I realize a couple of them actually threaten to kill Dylan but they don't you know we're supposed to think that they're badass for doing that. We're not supposed to think that they're out of line. So the other movies sometimes have a slasher vibe, and this does as well at times. In an interview, the director said he was inspired by Mad Max Fury Road, this ability to tell a story through action combined with the sports movie Underdog Story. His prayer moves in a more alien, less human way, more animalistic. And... Yeah, that's all. that was all music to my ears, and I totally see what he means. See. Yeah, and, you know, if girls don't get stories where they get to be amazing in, and in the lead, they may not be inspired to go out and try to do, you know. We men have tons, like the American Dream. I... How, how often do you even hear about someone saying oh you know women can do the american dream as well you know no, no no women are married to the guy who does the american dream or the daughter of or something you know why shouldn't women get ones especially now that they are literally losing rights that just like it's clear that there are a lot of people who have power who have no empathy for minorities now, that is that is it for all of my notes, so please go to the comment section, let me know how would you rank the five Predator movies. Are you hoping for more sequels or prequels or spin-offs? Who, you know, do, do you think someone should return from one of the other movies, like Dutch, or... Danny Lover's character. Harrigan, I want to say. Yeah. I remembered by thinking back to, because because people shout his name all throughout, you know. Yeah. Well, all throughout, but in several scenes, his, his name is shouted. Frustration. And what did you think of this movie? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell, like you think it's secretly a predator. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie, and recently these videos tend to come out very similar to this one. So, in, in other words, if you want my videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.